welcome to St. Michael's and our Sunday service and a very warm welcome, especially to all of you who are visiting us for your first time. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be God's kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, in Christ, you have revealed your glory among the nations. Preserve the works of your mercy that your church throughout the world may persevere with steadfast faith in the confession of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy, to the Church of the Thessalonians and God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace. We always give thanks to God for all of you and mention you in our prayers, constantly remembering before our God and Father your work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers and sisters beloved by God, that he has chosen you because our message of the gospel came to you not in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with full conviction, just as you know what kind of persons we proved to be among you for your sake. And you became imitators of us and of the Lord, for in spite of persecution, you received the word with joy inspired by the Holy Spirit so that you became an example to all the believers in Macedonia and Achaia. For the word of the Lord has sounded forth from you, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but in every place your faith in God has become known, so that we have no need to speak about it. For the people of those regions report about us what kind of welcome we had among you and how you turned to God from idols to serve a living and true God and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who rescues us from the wrath that is coming. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. The Pharisees went and plotted to entrap Jesus in what he said. So they sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere and teach the way of God in accordance with truth and show deference to no one, for you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us then, what do you think? Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. Then he said to them, Whose head is this and whose title? They answered, The emperor's. Then he said to them, Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard this, they were amazed, and they left him and went away. The Gospel of the Lord. I speak to you in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning and welcome to St. Michael's on this 18th day in October. In the latter part of the 17th century, the German theologian and pastor Auguste Franca founded an orphanage to care for homeless children in Halle, Germany. One day when Franca desperately needed funds to carry out his work, a destitute Christian widow came to his door seeking help and assistance, and she was begging for a gold coin. Because of his own financial situation, he politely but regretfully declined, saying he could not help. And disheartened, the woman began to weep, and her tears moved Franca, and he asked her to wait. He stepped back inside his home and went to a room and knelt and began to pray. He was seeking God's guidance, and he felt that the Holy Spirit wanted him to change his mind. His heart was moved. And so trusting the Lord to meet his own needs, he gave her the money. He gave her that gold coin. Two mornings later, he received a letter of thanks from the widow. And she explained that because of his generosity, she had asked the Lord to shower the orphanage with gifts. Well, believe it or not, that same day, that same day, Franca received 12 gold coins from a wealthy woman and two more from a friend in Sweden. He thought he had been amply rewarded for helping the widow. But he was soon informed that the orphanage was to receive 500 gold pieces from the estate of Prince von Württemberg. And when he had heard this, Franca began to weep in gratitude, recognizing that this sacrificial giving to this needy widow, in this work, in this giving of himself, that he had been enriched and not impoverished. It is an example of the power of prayer. It's an example of the power of faith when you lean into something and you give of yourself. You know, it reminds me of, of that great scene in the movie Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. You may have seen that movie. And Indiana Jones is running out of a temple as it's crumbling. His father is injured. He's waiting outside the temple. He had just discovered the Holy Grail and the old knight standing there told him as he was leaving and things were starting to fall apart. His words were to him, you must take a step of faith. And obviously it stuck with him. And as he ran out, the pathway in which had been there to guide him across, a very narrow pathway over the bottomless cavern had crumbled and fallen apart. 
And he was standing there realizing the urgency to get outside that temple to help save his father. And there he was with this holy grail. And he's standing there looking at this bottomless cavern and his signature bullwhip would not save the day. And so what does he do? He remembers in that moment, take a step of faith. He closes his eyes. He puts his hand over his chest as though he's saying the Pledge of Allegiance. He looks skyward and he takes that moment to recall who he is, what he believes in, who has been there to support him, who his Creator is. And he takes that step. And he doesn't just step to see if something's there in front of him. No, he he leans into it with his whole body. He must put his whole self into it and lean forward, trusting as he takes that step, trusting that that pathway is going to be there and that he's not going to fall to his death. And lo and behold, as he does this, that pathway is there to support him and he makes his way across. It's a reminder of what it means to take a step of faith. It's a reminder of the power of prayer. It's something tangible at times when things can seem intangible. It's the power of faith, leaning in. You know, as well as I do, that money can and does rule this world. But how we use it and what guides our hearts and our souls is the real question. Certainly it is easier to experience the tangible allegiances of this world and the results are before our eyes. We see it all the time, all around us. We could say to ourselves, you know, I, I can do what is right for this cause and I can help these fo- folks in need and here and give a little here, give a little there. And that God will see these works and God will bless what I do. This is often intangible, or it can feel intangible. And yet we all know, because we've all been there, to some extent, that the faithful Christian heart knows very well the tangibility of this living. It's who we're called to be. It's who we're called to live into, and what Christ did for us in Himself. Give to Caesar that which is Caesar's, and to God that which is God's. You've just heard this in the Gospel this morning. Jesus' own words as he responds to the Jewish authority, trying to entrap him, trying to catch him in a moment where they could use his words against him. And Jesus is not simply saying that God and state are two distinct parts. Not, that's not exactly what he's saying. He's speaking on a much deeper level, a much more profound level. Remember that coin belonged to Caesar because it was stamped with Caesar's image. And the Greek word here used in the ancient Greek is icon for image, icon. And it's marked with the image and the inscription of Caesar. That coin was made by the emperor for the emperor's purposes Caesar had ownership on that coin, and all others like it. It was made in the image of Caesar. The question that naturally comes to mind is, what then belongs to God? Well, what is made in the image of God? What is stamped in the likeness of God and created for God's purposes? Our purpose is, as human beings, and what makes us worth anything, anything, is that we are created in the very image of God. At our baptism, we are further marked. We are stamped and we are inscribed with the sign of the cross on our foreheads, on our hearts. We are claimed for all eternity. Our image and our likeness 
And what is written upon us and upon our hearts is that of God. To whom then do we belong? To whom are we to render? To whom are we to surrender? This, the question of our ultimate loyalty and our deepest allegiances, is what Jesus is really talking about as he deals with the plots and the traps of his enemies. Where are our hearts placed? Where does our heart owe its allegiance? The Lord is saying simply that what belongs to God is nothing other than we ourselves. There is no higher claim upon us, and there can be no higher claim upon us than that. Our lives are God's, and all that we do is to be marked by that conviction alone. None other. All competing, competing claims for our lives and for our allegiances are to be evaluated and understood in the light of whose we are and whose image we bear. Because God's image is found in the other. When I see you, when you see me, we see the very image of God in the other. We are called to that. Sometimes the experience of, of the other, we may at first believe, is wholly different from us. But we all know, deep within ourselves, that we are gravely wrong about that. The image in the other we are to honor. The image of God in every single one of us uniquely placed established. And this is giving back to God and what already belongs to God in the first place. And by doing so, we are honoring our Creator and honoring each other. For the Lord has shown us great generosity through God's grace and God's blessing. We are called to go from this place, whether it be right here in person or in the virtual world, which will continue and is an opportunity and a blessing in the time of, this, of our church. New ways we can reach you. New ways we can reach out to each other and those who are looking for this hope and grace. But sharing what we have with each other, sharing that grace and blessing others as we go about it, always giving to God the things that are God's in the first place. The state lays out the law. God establishes eternal principles. Jesus lays down these eternal principles. He does that in His preaching, His teaching, all throughout the Gospels. Laws come and go. Eternal principles remain forever. To whom do we belong? Laws or principles? Mammon or God? And what is tangibly God's? Is it that gold coin? What is tangibly God's? St. Michael's is. St. Michael's is, as is every other church that owes its allegiance to the Almighty God. St. Michael's, its buildings, its properties, its ministries, its staff, its leadership, its people, you and me, we are all tangible aspects of God's work bringing hope and grace to one another right here and beyond. Remember, we are all on board the same ship, filled with this love and hope, headed in that same direction. Let us all do our part to keep this ship afloat. As you saw that video that Greg did recently, it is truly a ship. It truly is. 
And it's going somewhere. We're not stagnant. We've been doing church for the past six to seven months. And we continue, albeit different, but we continue and we will. We are living in the paradox of two kingdoms. We are called to do our part to keep this ship afloat, moving toward eternity. We are giving genuine, genuinely for God. That God will enrich us in ways that we cannot even begin to conceive. When we give of ourselves, as Franca did, sacrificially, when we take that step of faith, leaning into it, giving of ourselves, God is at work. Give to the emperor that which is the emperor's, and to God that which is God's. Sometimes it really takes every bit of ourselves leaning forward in a trusting step of faith. It's hard. It's so hard to do. But that's what we're called to do. God bless you. God keep you. Amen. In peace, I bid the prayers of this people for the cares and concerns of the church and the world and for all people in their daily life and work, for those endangered by war, for our enemies and ourselves, that all people might respond to your love and open their hearts to reconciliation, and for this community, the nation, and the world, for the just and proper use of your creation for all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble, especially those affected by COVID-19. We pray for the Episcopal Farm Worker Ministry in Newton Grove and the members of that community who struggled during this difficult time. May they find hope. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation, hear us, Lord. We pray for all who have died, especially Garen J. Ryden Sr. and those who have died during this pandemic, alone and afraid, and those who died in war, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer.
the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.